I don't know how many times I've died. Hundreds, thousands maybe. The fact is, I've lost count. I've also lost count of the many different ways I've died. I've been crushed, I've been impaled, I've been chopped to pieces. I've been impaled and chopped to pieces at the same time. I've even been devoured by monsters of epic proportions. But you know what? Dying over and over and over again is perfectly fine. As long as it happens in a video game like Elden Ring. Contrary to what our parents and other responsible adults might think, video games aren't just colossal waste of time. They're not just mindless distractions that transform promising young individuals into lifelong sociopaths. In fact, if understood correctly, video games can become a powerful tool to help teach us about resilience about optimism, and about self-confidence. Some games can even be instrumental in showing us that the process can be just as important as the product. That it's the effort, not just the success, that counts. And that it's the journey, not just the destination, that truly matters. Now. Don't get me wrong. It's not as if I started playing a game like Elden Ring one day and immediately had a philosophical epiphany. In fact, it was quite the opposite. When I started the game, I thought I was quite a talented player. I imagined myself easily swashbuckling through the game and in just a couple of hours, beating it completely. Lo and behold, that was exactly what didn't happen. Elden Ring was clearly a very different game from any others that I had ever played. And unbeknownst to me, I was about to have a very rude awakening to that fact, as well as learn a very valuable lesson along the way. So, here's what happened. As I started the game, I walked around for a few minutes. Then, I jumped straight into the first dungeon that I came across, only to spend the next two hours in there, being repeatedly beaten to death over and over again by the dungeon's first boss. As the minutes slowly slipped by, and as my deaths really started to pile up, I got angry. My hands began trembling, and my teeth began grinding. Then, at death 75, just as I was being beaten down once again by the boss's massive chained hammers, I jumped out of my seat, started screaming profanities on my computer screen, and I quit. For good. Well, for a week, actually. After my long hiatus, I was back. Back to facing off against that big, bad boss once again. Guess what? I didn't win. I got beaten into oblivion again and again and again and again. By this point, I was almost 10 hours into the game. I had died over 300 times to this boss alone. But this time around, I wasn't going to give up that easily. It was at this point that I had my first realization. I realized that I wasn't getting hit as much. I was lasting longer than before. And yes, even though I was still dying to the boss, I was slowly getting better and better at it. 
Oh, the game, I mean, not, not the dying part. <laughs> Slowly, but very surely, I was getting closer and closer to my goal of beating this boss for the very first time. After a few dozen more deaths, I did it. By the end of the day, I had beaten my very first boss in Elden Ring. The sense of accomplishment I got from that, it was exhilarating. As I walked out of the dungeon that afternoon, I had my head held high. But I didn't actually have very much to show for it. Considering the ridiculous amount of hours I spent on the boss, the blood, sweat, and tears I'd sacrificed along the way, as well as the over 500 deaths I'd endured by the end, considering that in this game, you, you should have gotten rewarded really handsomely for this, I didn't. Instead of getting my enemy's mighty chained hammers, or his glorious looking suit of gladiator armor, all I got was a tiny crest that allowed me to be fire for resistant to fire damage. Thanks a lot, Grave Warden. <laughs> Curiously, it was at this moment that I had my second startling realization. I realized all over again that Elden Ring was truly different from any other games I had ever played. It was connecting to me on a much deeper level, perhaps a spiritual level. I realized that instead of treating us like children, instead of just allowing us to easily rush through the game, Elden Ring treated us like adults. We were being treated like people who deserved a challenge. That's the game changer, no pun intended. Elden Ring didn't reward us with cool weapons or flashy pieces of armor. Instead, we had to use our heads, put in the effort, and we had to accept that by the end, we could be getting very little in return. You see, that's the true reward of Elden Ring, that sense of incredible success, having accomplished the impossible, a celebration of having endured and learned from the journey, rather than simply arriving at the destination. So, how does all of this apply to real life? How do games like Elden Ring, like Minecraft, like Call of Duty, and so many others, how do these games actually benefit us in our own lives? Let me show you. A few months ago, I had my final math test. Anyone who knows this test knows it's a big one. For me, it was worth up to 15% of my final math grade. Now, I think I'm quite the talented math student. I imagine myself easily beating, going through this math test and getting 100. But I still decided to study hard. I tried to absorb as much information from, the, from my textbooks as possible. And on the day of the test, I gave it my best shot. Afterwards, I felt really good. There wasn't many hard questions on the test. And so, I was expecting to get around a 96, perhaps. When I got it back, the number on the top of the page was just a 90. That was way below what I wanted. If this had happened to me a year ago, before I played Elden Ring, before I learned about the importance of resilience, of optimism, and of self-confidence, I would have been crushed. I would have been angry and depressed and beaten myself up for days, ruminating about all the things that went wrong and focusing on the negative result. However, that isn't what I did. Instead, I focused on the positives, on all the things I could learn from this, 
rather than all the things I had failed in it. In an interview with The New Yorker, the creator of Elden Ring, Hidetaka Miyazaki, once said that his goal in creating the game was to allow as many young people as possible to experience the joy in overcoming hardship. Mr. Miyazaki couldn't have put the lesson of the game any better. In fact, it's not just a lesson for us young people either. Everyone here, everyone in this room, can appreciate the joy in overcoming hardship. Regardless of our age, our background, or our position in society, we all go through hard times. We all experience hardship, and things don't always work out the way you want them to. But if we can just remember that sometimes the process matters more than the product, that it's the effort, not just the success, that counts, and that it's the journey, not the destination, the reward, or the result that truly matters, then just like how I beat that one boss in Elden Ring, we can all break our way through the walls of negativity and finally grasp at that tiny bit of happiness we fought so hard to obtain. Surely, even that tiny speck of joy is something worth dying for. Thank you. Thank you.